Okay. Just, so, hello, everybody. Welcome to another Logistics in Quarantine seminar. On behalf of the Brazilian Logic Society and of the Logic Interest Group of the Brazilian Computer Society, it's a pleasure to introduce Professor Alejandro Diaz Caro, who will talk about extensional proofs in the propositional logic model isomorphism. Alejandro, thank you very much for accepting our invitation. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation. And uh, well, as uh, I was just saying before uh, the recording started, that uh, in my slides, I sadly assume that everybody knows uh, Lambda Calculus, but uh, I will try to uh, do my best uh, to not uh, focus that much in Lambda Calculus on some specifics. But uh, of course, please ask me any question at any time during the presentation. I prefer not to arrive to the end of the presentation, but uh, that, <laughs> that the people understand something. So if you don't understand uh, anything that I am saying, just unmute yourself and ask me questions. Okay, this is a showing work with uh, have been doing with uh, Shield of Weck. Uh, and the, the title of this presentation is the title of the last paper, but uh, there are uh, two papers. Uh, so I I will start with the first paper, and at the end I will comment uh, something about this this uh, extensional uh, proofs. In, I will start with this uh, propositional logic modulo isomorphism, which is the the, the the main idea. Okay, um, then I will arrive to the extensional. Um, what the, the, the extensional uh, rules have to do in, in this. Um, so, okay, how do I pass here? Okay, okay, what are type, well, first I say propositional logic and then I started uh, speaking about types. Uh, that is because I, uh, I was assuming everybody uh, knows Lambda Calculus and the idea is that for each uh, for each uh, type system, for each uh, um, system of lambda calculus with types, you have a logical system behind, and there is a correspondence uh, known as the curry hover correspondence, where the the proofs in propositional logic are the types in 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 your type theory, and the proofs. Of those uh, of those uh, propositions are the programs in the lambda calculus. So programs are proofs, uh, and the types are uh, formulas yeah, in the propositional logic. So this type isomorphism is a notion that uh, you can also speak about a formula isomorphism or a propositions isomorphism. And the idea is that you will have two formulas or two types to be isomorphic. If there are two programs or two proofs, uh, one program being of type A to B, or one or you have a proof of A implies B, and then you have a proof of B implies A, and if you compose those proofs, you get the uh, proof of the identity. Okay, so that is the what is an isomorphism. So A is isomorphic to B if you can take these these two proofs and compose them and then obtain the identity. Uh, so identity uh, is the A implies A. Okay, that is uh, the identity in, in programming. So for example, these two formulas are isomorphic. A and B is isomorphic to B and A uh, because you can construct these two programs. This is the program that takes something of type A and something of type B, or if you want a proof of A and a proof of B, and construct a proof of B and a proof of A. How? Well, you just swap the proofs, okay? So you have the pair of proofs, you swap the proofs, and then you have a proof of B and, and E, okay? Oh, sorry. In the same way, the proof of B and E, you use the same program that the only thing that it does is uh, to swap them and you, you get a proof of A and B. And if you compose the two swaps, what you get is a, you pass a proof of A and B and you obtain a, a and B because you swap it twice, okay? And then you say that these two propositions are isomorphic, okay? So the proofs are not the same. This, this proof and this proof uh, are not the same in the sense that this is expecting a proof of A and B, and this is expecting a proof of B and A, okay? So the order is different, so they are not exactly the same proof. This is a pair of a proof of A and a proof of B, 
this is a pair of a proof of B and then a proof of A. Okay, so they are not the same, but as you can see, you can get something which is quite similar. Okay, A and B or B and A. But in the same way, you have a, a lot of other uh, formulas, other uh, isomorphies. In particular, if you only take the conjunction and the implication, these four isomorphies are all the isomorphies that you can have uh, with only these two connectives. Okay, and this uh, has been proven by uh, Bruce de Cosmo and Longo in the 92, that uh, if you only take a conjunction and implication in class in intuitive logic, then the only isomorphies that you can have are these four. All the other isomorphies that you could have are uh, just a combination of these. Okay, so you have associative, you have commutativity of conjunction, associativity. You have this kind of uh, of thing that is is called currification. Okay, a and b implies c is the same as a implies b implies c. And then this distributivity uh, rule that say that A implies B and C is the same as A implies B and A implies C. So the, for the first one, I already show you what are the, the two programs, which are a swap in the two senses uh, that compose your identity. For this one, you can take something a bit, a bit more convoluted, but it's not that hard. You have to say, okay, you have the program that receives a proof of A and B, Let's say this is called X, a proof of C, it is called Y, and it construct a proof of A and B and C. So it, it takes the first of uh, this proof of A and B, so it gives you a proof of A, and then it constructs the pair of the second with uh, the C, okay? Well, in the other sense, you can have it for having the, the other in the other sense of the isomorphism. And if you compose, of course, you, you get the identity. You pass this proof, you get the same proof. In the same way, the currification is just, you give it a proof of A and B implies C, okay? So this is a, this is a function, it's something that takes an, an A and B and return as C, and you construct a proof of A implies B implies C. How do you do this? Okay, the curry will take the F, which has this type, so it's a proof of this implication. Then X, which is a proof of A, Y, which is a proof of B, and it produces a proof of C just by passing to this guy the conjunction A and B, okay? Because this is expecting the conjunction. Okay. Well, the uncurry is in the other sense. You can do it, and then you get the, the, the two, the, the the two things get the the identity so if you pass f you get f if you do curry and curry and you pass a she you get she and finally the last one the details are not uh, important it's just to show you that uh, this isomorphism can be constructed okay the the last one is a bit more uh, more complex in the construction because uh, you get already a let here but the, it doesn't matter it's just that if you get a proof of a implies b and c to construct a proof of A in plus B and A in plus C is just to take the first of what you get when you apply this to A, and then the second of what you get when you, you do this implication with a, an argument A, and then you create the pair of those, okay? So in the opposite side is something similar, and then you compose and you get the, the identity. Any other isomorphism are just a consequence of this, uh, of this uh, of these four isomorphies. Okay, so this is what are the type isomorphies or what are the, the isomorphies between propositions, okay? We say that two propositions are, are isomorphic if you can get these two, um, these two proofs of implication and you can compose to the identity. Uh, so what is the goal of uh, our uh, line of research? So what we want to go to do is to go further and to say, okay, if A and B are isomorphic, for example, A and B is isomorphic to B and A, what we want is to have the same proofs, okay? We know that if you get a proof of A, you can transform it into a proof of B, okay? Because it is an isomorphism and there is a way to transform it. That is what I showed you before. So what we want to say is, okay, you don't need to transform it. If you already have a proof of A, 
then you have a proof of B because you know that there is a transformation possible to transform this proof to the other. Okay. So what we want is to say, okay, the proof of A are also proof of B, and vice versa. Okay. So the the goal is to identify isomorphic types to say if these two types are uh, isomorphic, then we will consider that they are in fact the the same. And then if you consider that they are the same, you get the same proofs. Okay. You don't need to prove the one. Uh, uh, if you have the other. So what I say, if you have, for, for example, a proof of A uh, implies B and A implies B, well, you know that also you have a proof of A implies B and C, okay? Because you have a proof of A implies B and A implies C, okay? And so the idea is that, is that if you have A implies B and A implies C, and somebody gives you a proof of A, then you can deduce a proof of B and C without having to transform anything, okay? That is the, 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 the goal of this. <coughs> In terms of uh, the lambda calculus, if you don't know lambda calculus, uh, you can ignore the details, but the, the idea is that this is a proof of A implies B. This is something that takes A and return a proof of B. This is something that takes A a and return a proof of C, okay? And this is the pair, it's exactly this type. Then the idea is that this proof is exactly the same as taking only A, a proof of A, and returning this uh, pair of proofs, okay? So what we want is to identify this proof with this proof. So we want this, uh, this to be a, an equality, okay? These two terms in lambda calculus are different and as programs, they are different, okay? As program, they are different because this is a program that will take a proof of uh, A and construct a proof of B. Then this is another program with that with a proof of A construct a proof of uh, C. And what we want is to construct one uh, to consider this as only one program that takes both at the same time. Okay, so it doesn't uh, look that uh, crazy if you see it in this way, but in programming they are not the same. So. This is the, the idea, try to identify this. So the setting that uh, we choose is simply type and the calculus this, uh, with the construction implication. So this is uh, just uh, a pro uh, propositional intuitionistic logic where we only have uh, implication and conjunction. And we will take these four uh, isomorphisms that we already know, okay? So here we only put uh, one atomic type, one atomic uh, formula. Okay, just to simplify the things. But uh, this is all what we can do. And what we want is that uh, is to add to, the, to this uh, system, to add this rule that say, if A is uh, given to B and you get an, a proof of A, this is, com this is directly a proof of B. Okay, you don't need to do anything. So this is the rule that we want to add to the system. Of course, this is not that direct. If you add this rule, you will break everything else. And then we have to see how to add this rule without breaking everything. Okay, that is the, the, the idea. So let's start. Let's say that uh, first we want to see what happened with the associativity and commutativity okay, of the consumption. So usually what you have is that to have a proof of A and B, you need to have a proof of A to have a proof of B. Okay, this is S and R, and then the pair of proofs is a proof of A and B. Okay, this is the, 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 the usual proof of A and B. Now we say, okay, A and B is the same as B and A, and you have the, this associativity rule also. And then what we are saying is that the proof of uh, RS, so the proof of A and B, this, uh, which is this pair of, of uh, proofs, is the same as this proof. Okay. Of course, th there is a problem. If we we cannot identify where is the proof of A and where is the proof of B, because they are exactly the same as what we are saying, then we can run into problems. For example, usually the elimination of the conjunction is uh, done in this way. If you have a proof of A and B, you can say, okay, give me the first of both proofs, and then you get a proof of A. But now we don't have a first because we just say that uh, there is no order between the two proofs. So what we say is that these two guys are the same. So if these two guys are the same, you can type this proof 
with this type, okay, which is uh, the, 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 the commutation. And then when you ask for a false, you will get a proof of B. So you, you are breaking everything. You, you, you cannot use the exactly the same rule. Um, moreover, since we say that these two are the same, you can also you cannot ask for the first proof here because the first proof here and the first proof here is the same, and then you break uh, all, the, all the system. So what you can do here is, since we are more thinking to, in the logic behind and not in the programming language, we can say, uh, okay, what if uh, we just mark all my all my my terms we say okay this is the proof of a this is the proof of b and then the projection you don't do it by position because the position doesn't make sense anymore this is commutative and associative so it's a list and what you say is okay if you have a proof of a then when you, what you can do is to ask for a proof of a and then the system will give you the proof of a okay so if there is a proof of b and a proof of a you ask for the proof of A, and the system will return you the proof of A. Okay, and that's all. You don't need uh, an order. You just ask for the proof of what you want. Of course, here is a problem, which is what happens if you have more than one proof of A. Okay, for example, you could have that R, uh, that B and S and, and A are exactly the same. So you have A and A. You have a two different proof of A, and now you are asking for a proof of A. So what the system will do, if you will consider this as something that should be programming, what uh, you usually consider is that this is uh, deterministic. And then if you ask for a program, you ask the program to do something, okay? Something deterministic. Here, it will not be deterministic, of course. If you ask for a proof of A and there are more than one proof of A, the system will choose one proof of A. In logical terms, it is not that bad. What we are saying is uh, we are asking the system, give me a proof of A, and the system is giving you a proof of A. There are more than one, okay, the system can choose. And that will be, if you do it in a programming language, it will be uh, up to the implementation of this programming language, what proof of A this gives you, okay? So it's not a big deal. We have more than one proof of A, the system will choose one proof of A and that, uh, that uh, respect the uh, social reduction, which is the, this tells you, okay, from here you will extract a proof of A and what you get at the end is a proof of A, okay? So this uh, works as expected. So what happened with the currification? The currification is this, the things that say that if you give a and B imply C, this is the same as giving first A and then returning something that will say B imply C, okay? And vice versa. If you do in this in this way, you can give the two premises at uh, once and then you obtain C. So this induces this, uh, this kind of uh, equivalence, which improves. Here, if R is a proof of A and B imply C, what you are saying is, okay, you are, you, you will give it given a proof of A and B, which is something of this form, a, a proof of A and a proof of B. And then this is the same as if to this guy, R, you give first the proof of uh, A and then the proof of B. This is what this, uh, this equivalence is saying, okay? Of course, there is a problem in, in, the, in the programming side, because now in lambda calculus, what you have is this, what I told you before, is that this is a function that says, if you give me, if you give me a proof of, of A, I know how to construct a proof of B, okay? Or in this case, uh, yeah, if this is A in place B, then you give me a proof of A, I know how to give you a proof of E, of B. Then you give me a proof of A, how are they constructed? Well, I take here in R, all the occurrences of this, uh, of this A, which are uh, the, all the places where I use the hypothesis that I know A, okay? And I replace it by the, the witness that you give me, okay? This proof of A, okay? And this is what uh, this means. But now we have a little problem because 
Now, this construction can be uh, of uh, like, like this, but can be of type A and B, or can be of type A implies B implies C, okay? So you don't know exactly. So let's uh, see an example. Suppose we have this uh, easy proof of tau and tau implies tau and tau, okay? This, uh, what is the proof? You assume tau, tau, tau and tau, and then uh, the witness is exactly your assumption, okay? It's the x that you are assuming. This is an implication of the, the identity. But this, with this rule, is isomorphic to tau implies tau implies tau and tau. So, if since I am saying that I can have the proof of tau, uh, the, the proof of tau and tau by two proofs separately, what I am saying is that I can give to this guy the proof of uh, this assumption, the proof of, uh, of tau, which is R, and another proof of tau, which is S. And this, we have to use this rule to construct the proof of tau and tau. But if you use this rule here, you are not doing this. This rule says you take you take the first the the first argument that you give, and you replace uh, in the body of this function. You replace the argument by this uh, this witness you give. So here, what you are saying is that if you use this rule in this case, what you will get is that uh, is R applied to S, which is not at all what we wanted. What we wanted is a proof of R and S, okay, because of the type. Okay, what we are saying with this uh, equivalence here is that, in fact, this is equivalent to having exactly this, and this behaves as expected. You have the, the pair, and then you, you can construct the proof of R and S, which is exactly the pair, okay? But, of course, we have to change this rule, because this rule, in this case, is wrong. In this case, is correct. So we have to change the, the rule and say, okay, let's check what is the type of the witness they are giving me. If this is a witness of A and I am expecting a witness of A, then I can I can do a replacement. So here you cannot because the witness you are giving is a witness of tau, and what we are expecting is tau and tau, tau and tau. So you need to transform this into that. And then here you can use the, this rule. Okay, we have to change this rule, which is called the beta reduction, and uh, to ask for a type. Okay, so we started by changing the projection. Now the projection is uh, not with respect to the position; it's with respect to the type. Now we change the beta reduction. The beta reduction is not anymore just directly something syntactic here. You can you have to also check that the witness they are giving you is the witness you are expecting, okay? So we choose this equivalence for this uh, isomorphism, but uh, there are other choices. The other choices are a bit more convoluted. They are not that, e that easy to read, but it's a matter of choice. You could say, okay, this is a proof of A and B implies C, Okay, this this uh, side of the of the equivalence, and then you can transform this into a proof of if you give me a, you give me b. I know how to construct a proof of c. How well you change the hypothesis you had, which was an hypothesis of, of uh, a and b, by uh, exactly the, the 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 two hypotheses you are giving. Okay, by by uh, putting both together, this. Uh, will give you this side uh, from from left to right in this uh, equivalence, and from right to left, you will have to do something more uh, bizarre. You say, okay, if you know how to construct a proof of C, when you have the witness of A and the witness of, of C of B, what you say is, okay, now if you give me the witness of of A and B, you give a proof of A and B, what you have to do is, okay, to extract the first one and to put it in the place of the witness of A and the second one, of the B, and put it in the side of the B, okay? So this is another choice that also uh, allows you to do this isomorphism, okay? So this is easier, uh, at least syntactically, but uh, this is another choice. And finally, 
we get the last uh, implication, the last uh, isomorphism. The last isomorphism say that if you get a proof of A implies <coughs> B and C, this is the same as A implies B and A implies C. So what you are saying is that if you know how to construct a proof of B, uh, of B and C, okay, suppose that you give the, exactly the proof of B and the proof of C in this way, then you can transform this into this pair. It's the pair of something that knows how to construct this proof and something that proves this, okay? And this is not enough. You will need also uh, another one that, that uh, says uh, <coughs> if from a proof of A, here you can extract a proof of B, you are projecting here a proof of B, okay? Because uh, this is uh, something that you can do with this uh, conjunction. Then you could, from this, that proof A implies B and C, extract a proof of A and B. So we are saying that if you give me A and then from here you project B, you could start by projecting this proof and that's all. Okay, it's A implies B. So for example, let's say that you have this proof of A implies B, uh, A and B implies A and B. Okay, this is the identity again. So it's, you give me the witness, I give you as a result the same witness. So this, by this isomorphism, is equivalent to this, is A and B implies A and A and B implies B. And from here, you could extract a proof of just the first one, just by saying, okay, give me now that you have this conjunction, I want the first one, or uh, here is, there is no first one, is the proof of A and B implies A, okay? So you can, from this, you can extract this. And this is a proof of A and B implies A. How it behaves, okay, here, uh, you are projecting something that is not a pair. Okay, this is not a pair, this is just the, the identity function. So what you do is you use this equivalence to say, okay, this is the same as putting the projection inside, you are doing in this sense from, from right to left, okay? You put the projection inside and what you are saying is, once you give me a, a, a witness of A and B, I know how to construct a proof of A, okay? You just project the proof of A, okay? But uh, you will have to delay the projection until you have the witness, okay? This is what this rule says. Again, with this equivalence, you have several, several possibilities. So the two possibilities I show is with, with the introduction of the arrow, okay? With the, this, this is, you introduce the arrow and this, you introduce the pair. Or if you want, you, if this is the introduction of the implication, this is the introduction of the, of the conjunction, and you transform it into something that first introduced the, the implication and then introduced the conjunction, okay? So you are saying introduce, these two introductions, you can swap it, okay? In the second rule that I gave you is the introduction of the implication and the elimination of the conjunction. And what you are saying is that you can, commute these two also. And there are other two choices, which are, uh, which are with the elimination of the arrow. So with the elimination of the arrow, you will say, okay, this is, if you have, sorry, if you have an arrow and you give a witness, uh, what do you get? Or sorry, uh, so if you have a pair of arrows in particular, this is this, and you give me a witness, I know how to construct the pair which is, okay, you pass the witness to the first and to the second, okay? So this is the elimination of the arrow with the introduction of the conjunction. And finally, you can have the elimination of both, which is, okay, if you, from something of this type, so a proof of this, you can extract a proof of A implies B, then you could first pass the argument A here, construct B and C, and then extract the proof of B, okay? Here, of course, uh, you have to be careful because uh, it's not always possible because from R, you know that you can extract the proof of A and B, 
but you no, don't know what is R, so you have to ask that R is a proof of this type. So, so you can say, okay, R is expecting a witness of, of A, okay? So here you have to give more choices. But anyway, you have these are all the possibilities. So here I give you the all the possibilities you have, all the all the all the rules that you can have with uh, with this uh, uh, for isomorphism. And uh, the problem is that uh, now we have too many rules, and with that many rules, what uh, may happen is that some program, some proof. Will never end, so it's not uh, it's not uh, correct in the sense that uh, the all the proofs uh, should be something that uh, at some point the cut elimination uh, ends, and here the cut elimination can loop. So here is a counterexample, and this uh, example is quite hard if you never saw lambda calculus, but. Uh, in any case, the uh, the idea of this counter example is a, is a bit hard because it took us uh, like four years to realize that if we have this counter example, we have been trying to prove this normalization property, which means every proof terminates. For four years, we, we couldn't do it until at some point we say, oh, here is a counter example. This is why we cannot prove it. So, <laughs> and this is the counter example. Um, let me show you the contract example first and then how we fix it. But the, the whole idea is that you have a specific term, a specific proof, which when you start reducing this proof until you get the, the normal format, until you, you get the proof that cannot reduce anymore, you, you get a, a something atomic. Uh, what you get is something that uh, if you start reducing, you get the same proof at some point, and then this will loop forever, okay? Because you are reducing this proof using the beta reduction, the projection, and at some point you get exactly the same proof and then you will continue forever, okay? So the, the example is quite hard because yeah, and this is the easier example we, we could find, but uh, the idea is that this rule where you can uh, put the, this argument inside the projection or here or outside the projection is what uh, create the loops. So basically, you could have uh, something that uh, seems that will terminate, but at some point you will replace this guy, but something that uh, that uh, can can be swapped, okay, thanks to the, this swap uh, rule, and then put it inside, and then at the end you reconstruct the same the same uh, proof uh, a bit uh, deeper inside. I will not. Uh, I, I don't want to bore you with all the details of the example, but uh, the, if you read uh, very carefully this uh, this uh, slide, you will find exactly all the rules that I show you are here, and you can follow, and you will see that you start with this omega term, which is this one, and you end up with uh, the omega inside. And then, of course, <coughs> this process will never terminate. Of course, this means that uh, our logic is not uh, correct, our proof system is not correct, because <coughs> you need that all the proofs at some point terminate. Uh, and this means that uh, we choose to have too many uh, rules. So the first system that we created, uh, which we call it system I for isomorphism, we just choose some of the uh, of the equivalence between uh, proofs that uh, I showed you before. I showed you really a lot of uh, these equivalences. We choose only a subset of them. And we prove that with this subset, the system terminates. And you can express uh, more or less everything that you want to, to express, OK? So um, these highlights of the proofs, uh, if you are familiar with lambda calculus and proof of strong normalization, the usual proofs, uh, if you never heard about uh, strong normalization or the lambda calculus, please ignore what I am going to say in the, last, in the next minute. But uh, the idea is that in the proof of strong normalization, usually there is uh, one part where you have to prove uh, that there are some kind of neutral terms and some property on these neutral terms. The problem in our system is that we don't have neutral terms. 
So the numerical terms usually are the eliminations. Okay, this is elimination of an arrow. And in our case, an elimination can became, become an uh, introduction. Okay, this is a pair. And then you don't have neutral terms, and then everything is uh, harder. And then this paper is a uh, is really a proof of uh, skills to show how to prove uh, normal strong normalization without having these uh, neutral terms. So it's it's kind of uh, all the paper is uh, based on how to prove uh, the strong normalization for this system. But finally, we did it for this system, and this system is uh, quite nice. In, in the sense that a priori we don't have a progress rule. Progress is something that, uh, that you usually want, which is that all the uh, proofs ends by an introduction. So all the proofs ends by either a lambda term, which is something that tells you if you give me a proof of uh, a type, I know how to construct the proof of the other, or a pair, which is uh, uh, the, the proof of a conjunction. So the, those are the introduction, the introduction of the conjunction, the introduction of the arrow. So usually you will want to have that every proof ends up with a with an introduction because it means that you reduce everything that you you was able to reduce. You did all the cut eliminations and you end you end up there. Here, since we have to remove some of these equivalences. We don't uh, have this progress uh, property. So in particular, for example, if this is a proof that tells you, if you give me a proof of A and a proof of B, I know how to construct a proof of R, uh, a proof of uh, C, sorry, with uh, this R term. And it happened that instead of giving me the proof of A, you first give me the proof of B. This is possible because these two guys are isomorphic, okay? This you just do the curification. So this is A and B. The A and B is the same as B and A. Then you do and query again. So these two guys are isomorphic. Then you can give me first the proof of B, and then I don't know how to how to finish this uh, this proof. I have to say, okay, uh, until you don't give me the proof of A, I cannot uh, continue. Okay. So this is something that is not an introduction, but uh, you cannot uh, continue. With uh, if you have all the equivalences, then you can do it. But uh, if you have all the equivalences, then the programs will not uh, end. Then it's not a good idea. So we have to do it in this way. Here is another counterexample of uh, progress, which says, okay, this, as I showed you before, is a pair because this is a proof of tau and tau implies tau and tau, and this is equivalent to say tau and tau implies tau and tau and tau implies tau. Since this is a pair, you can project one of the pair, one of the conjunction. But now I don't know how to project this. Okay, I remove the possibility of putting the pi inside because this was the, the problematic rule. Then I have to say, I have no idea what to do with this. This is, you give me a proof that uh, tells me that this is a pair, but this is not a pair because this is atomic. So here uh, you have a problem. But nonetheless, at least the, we can prove that the logic is consistent. It's consistent in the sense that not everything is probable in the system. Okay, So we give a proof of consistency in the sense that, OK, at least you cannot prove false, because if not, you will be able to prove everything. We prove that not everything is probable. In particular, you cannot prove tau directly. Then at least you have some sort of consistency. Progress will be nice. We don't have progress, we have this. So up to here is what we did in this paper that I mentioned here. And now uh, it comes the title of my presentation, which is extensional proofs. It happens that, okay, these two guys are in normal form, so they cannot continue reducing, and they are not introductions, so that is bad. But if you add extension, extensional rules, the extensionality rules are these two rules here. Okay, this is the eta rule. I, I keep, keep uh, doing click instead of uh, just uh, pointing. Sorry. Uh, so are these two rules the eta rule and the delta rule? What are these two rules? The extensional rules says that first, if you have a proof of a in place b, then you can transform this rule in this way, which is 
almost the same. What I am saying is, you give me a proof of A, I will pass it to the proof of A implies B, and then go through the proof of B, okay? So this and this are almost the same. This is a bit more, seems a bit more complicated, uh, and that's all, but uh, do it, it does exactly the same. T is, some, is a proof of A implies B, and this is also a proof of A implies B. It's just that you say, okay, the hypothesis is uh, this uh, X, and you pass this hypothesis to T, and then you do exactly the same that you will do in the first place. Okay, so this doesn't change anything. In the same way, if you have a proof of A implies um, A and B, you can say, okay, you can project the proof of A, you can project the proof of B, and then reconstruct the proof of A and B. Okay, so these almost do nothing. Okay, this is what is called extensionality or extensional proofs, extensional rules. <coughs> But this will solve our problem. In the first case, this uh, case that I gave you here, where you have a way to construct a proof of C, if you give me the proof of A, the proof of B, uh, in that order, then I know how to prove a, uh, a proof of C with R. What you can do is you use the extensional rule, the eta rule, <coughs> and you say, okay, this is a proof of a implies something. So give me the argument A, I will put it at the end here. And now this is exactly what I needed because I knew once I have the two proofs, A and B, I can swap it, okay? Because they are the same as a pair with the qualification and then the pair swaps and then you can unpair again. And then you can pass the X here and do exactly what you wanted to do in the first place. So at the end, you consume, you consume this hypothesis x with this x, so you get the same x. And what you are doing is to put the, this, as, this s inside uh, this. So you are delaying this part of the, of the proof until you get the, the, the hypothesis a. Okay? But now, this is exactly what you wanted. You end up with, a, with an introduction. You are saying, if you give me a proof of A, I know how to construct a proof of C, and this, from here, you can even, even continue reducing this until you get something smaller, okay? Because here, you, you are wanting a proof of B, and you get a proof of B, okay? So this part, you can reduce it, uh, and you still expect the proof of A and B. In this, you also can do something similar, uh, before I show you that this term and this term were equivalent, and then I told you, okay, but if we do the equivalence, then we break uh, the normalization, so you don't finish always. But here, what we say is, okay, from here, take the x, and in the x, apply the delta, okay, this delta, that uh, construct the pair. You know that this x will have a type of a pair, so it's a conjunction. So you can extract a proof of tau and a proof of tau and then reconstruct the pair. Okay, this is exactly the delta rule. And now this is a lambda where you have a pair and this can break into a pair of lambdas. As I showed you before, it's one of the rules we keep in system I. And from here, there is no problem to project this guy because this guy is exactly the of this type. This, you give me a proof of a and B, and I know how to construct a proof of, uh, sorry, of tau and tau, and, and I know how to construct a proof of tau. It's, you just project the proof of tau. So this is the projection that you want. So from here, you get this. Now, since this is not a reversal, you just go from here to there, and not the other way around, then you break the loop, okay? You don't have a loop anymore. So nice. This is uh, system I eta because it's with extensional uh, proofs. What we get is four of the five rule we had before. This five, fifth rule, we notice that uh, in fact it could be a um, directed because from here going to there makes sense. From here going to there doesn't make sense because you have a pair. You are giving an argument doesn't make sense. The pair is not expected an argument instead. If you have a pair of functions 
and you pass this argument, it makes sense. So it makes sense to put it just in one direction. And then you are the two, you add the two extension I proved with uh, some contextual restriction that I avoid here to don't put that much in the, in the slide. And then you get a system where you have a normalization, you have the consistency, but you also have progress. Okay, so every normal form is an introduction. So every proof ends in a proof. Okay, that is the, the idea. So you have a proof system which is complete where the the proof of isomorphic propositions are the same. So summarizing, what uh, we have done is we define this uh, system I, extensional system I, where isomorphic propositions have the same proofs. This is the, the whole idea. Why, if you missed the first slide, so the idea is that if you know that these two guys are isomorphic, what you are saying is that if you have a proof of A, then you know how to construct a proof of B. And then what we say is, okay, if you have the, a proof of A and you know how to construct a proof of B, you already have a proof of B. Don't get fucked. It's just say you have a proof of B. So what we are saying is that from A and B, you prove A and B. It's exactly the same as from B and A, you construct B and A. Okay. So these two guys are exactly the same. That is the, the whole idea. What is uh, coming next? Okay, what we are working now with uh, one of my PhD students, which is uh, here uh, in the chat, I think, or he was here, uh, Christian Sotile, we, are, uh, we have uh, extended this to uh, polymorphism, so the universal quantification. We are uh, just finishing the, the proof of normalization for it, but it seems it uh, will work. And uh, a future work with him, we are studying more connectives and we want to implement it. Implement it means in two sense. One is uh, to implement this as a programming language, where in the programming language, you don't distinguish between uh, these isomorphic types, because if you have a function that waits for something to produce uh, something else, you can give something isomorphic and it should work anyway. Okay, that is the idea in the programming language. In the, uh, but also we want to see if we can uh, include this in some kind of proof of system or maybe a toy proof of system to, to start. But the idea is that, uh, again, to give these two guys to be the same. Of course, we have to study more connective for this because we only did it for conjunction and implication. So we have a, a big uh, PhD program here, which is uh, the PhD program of Christian, who just started this year. So we have all this uh, path to, to do right now. Um, well, that's all. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alejandro. So now we have some time for questions and comments, interactions. I would just like to ask you to <laughs> manifest first in the chat, just to avoid a lot of people talking at the same time. So, well, you can manifest it in the chat and you can make some kind of mind. So, uh, why we wait for people to manifest it? I have just a curiosity, maybe a silly question, but uh, do you think that it may be applied to detect soft plagiarism? Sorry? Sorry? Do, do, do you believe that this, this kind of thing may be used? to check uh, soft plagiarism? Ah, <laughs> I didn't solve uh, all this. Uh, no idea how uh, do the system works. If those system at some point uh, implement some kind of, uh, of typing, mm -hmm. uh, maybe it's a very future uh, application for this is to, uh, to, okay, you can equate some types, see? But there is very future application. I am just showing yeah, you how to do implication and construction, that's all. So it's a <laughs> very early stage for something like that. Well, just because uh, I have read some things about that and, uh, well, there was some kind of process in the justice here in Brazil and the ways they used to check if a software is a plagiarism of another one is a really, really rudimentary. 
they use some okay. kind of engineering uh, ways to show where physical objects are the same. Wow. Okay. Well, yeah, there, there is some people working in in text processing or, uh, with types. Uh, so maybe it's, uh, it's something to combine with uh, with those, uh, which is uh, much more developed, I think, that uh, just checking the, the, the exact uh, terms. But um, I, I think you you, you need a, that is a language processing because you need a lot of uh, understand the meaning of the sentences. It's not just the sentence, but uh, it's not my topic at all. It's just uh, something that I have heard <laughs> sometime. Yeah. So, do you have any other comments or question? I have <laughs> one, Petrucci. Okay. Hello? Elaine? Petrucci. Petrucci. Elaine first, please. No, mine is a very silly question. I mean, I, I got to the meeting late, so I, I, I lost the beginning of the talk, so it, it, it's going to be a silly question. So go ahead. I'll, 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 I'll ask my silly question then. I, I accept silly questions. Okay, so uh, so it's really, I, I like the talk very much. Uh, I. I'm just curious because I, I, I couldn't, I was in another meeting, so uh, I, I got here like late. Uh, you're already talking about the motivation. And I mean, this was test when I joined. So that's why I'm asking you. This. So what we do, so in proof theory, for example, what we do, I mean, of course, we try to, to answer this question when a proof of something is the same, take the same A, right? I mean, I, I think that at some point uh, you're talking about the same A. Uh, but what we want to do in proof theory is really to say, okay, these two proofs are not the same. Uh, although the object is the same, so they are uh, equivalent, of course, right? So um, what's the what's the uh, the goal that you have in mind for unifying uh, proofs that may be very different uh, of uh, of this uh, type that be equivalent? Something? Well, yeah, there are uh, many motivations, but uh, for example, you can uh, imagine having a proof assistant. Okay, I, I am speaking about the very far future, of course, but uh, you could imagine having a proof assistant where you have a big library of proofs, okay, and uh, to, to being able to use a proof for something uh, which is uh, which is also possible to use it because they are isomorphic, uh, is a gain because then you don't have to uh, transform your proof. The system will transform it uh, for you uh, directly. Okay, you don't have to have these witnesses of uh, of uh, isomorphism that tells you uh, how exactly you transform this into a proof of that, and then you you do the the, the other. It's a system directly that. Uh, will allow you to use this uh, proof in the way in the way that uh, you want. Okay. So that uh, answer the question. Okay. So, uh, so would this go into the direction of uh, people are uh, working with proof certificates and this kind of thing? So, if you have a proof of something, then uh, and something is uh, equivalent to something else, and you have the proof, a proof of something else, and you don't have to check again. That would be the, the goal, more or less, I mean, one of them. If you have a, a proof of uh, something which is uh, which happens to be uh, isomorphic to something else, then you can use it as if it were exactly the, the other, okay? And uh, you don't need to transform it. That is the, the, the idea. Okay. okay. So you you don't have to uh, keep in your library uh, one proof and the, the isomorphic proof, which is equivalent, uh, just in case you need it in in one form. You can use it in, in any in any way. Or if you think of it in a programming language, imagine that you have uh, well one of the rules that I show you is that uh, you can uh, here. You are projecting a function before 
uh, and uh, b before it is uh, applied. Okay. So in general, imagine that you have a, a program that uh, do some calculation and calculates uh, uh, two results, but you are interested only in one of those. Okay. What uh, this code will do is you could project the function and you get a, a reduced code that only calculates uh, what you are interested in. In fact, we for system i, not uh, the extensional thing, the system i, we have a paper with uh, Pablo Martinez Lopez, is another researcher from Argentina, where we implemented uh, this calculus. Uh, we did a, a small implementation of a language following this uh, calculus, um, and we added recursion also. So we have to add some equivalences for the recursion also. But uh, what uh, you can do there is, is that uh, even if you have a recursive, a recursive function that uh, to calculate something, it do it uh, does use both results. Okay, if you project one of those results because it's what uh, you want, this will uh, unfold of all the recursion and it, it will take only the pieces of code that uh, that uh, that helps you to calculate the first result which uh, which interested to you. So you can you can save this huge uh, function calculating a lot of things at, at the moment that you want to only use it to calculate one thing. You project it and you discard all the code and then you get a, a, a smaller code that only calculates what you want. Okay, so this is another use possible use of this uh, more in programming language, not in in proof of systems, but uh, both uses are possible. Petrucio? Okay, thank you for this talk, which was very interesting. Uh, I have some real, really silly question. I think that Elaine does not uh, uh, <coughs> ask it a really silly question, so I prepare one that's really silly. <laughs> Great. Okay. Uh, you mentioned that you have, as far as I understood, you have a kind of uh, inconsistent type or inconsistent proposition, I don't know. Uh, no, I Am mentioned I that we prove that there is no inconsistency. This is the ah, proof of no inconsistency. Yeah. Not that you cannot prove inconsistent type or something like that. What, what we prove here is that uh, one specific type has no proof. This means ah, okay. that you cannot prove everything. So okay. this is a small proof of consistency for system I. Uh, for okay. system I eta, we, we prove much more with the progress. But this is a small proof of consistency because what we are saying is that you cannot prove, prove false because uh, there is something that you cannot prove, then you, you didn't uh, prove uh, false. See? So you don't have uh, an, a form of negation in this system? Well, okay, this is just simply type. So it's a conjunction and implication. Uh -huh. So no, you don't have any negation. No, okay, no, no. We, we should be able to add negation if uh, this is one of the, the, the next uh, things to do is uh, to add a bottom type and then you can construct the negation by A in place bottom. But um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Another silly question is about uh, the meaning of to have a proof. I mean, for me, that I'm not acquainted with this kind of a stud, uh, to have a proof is a relation, not a property. A statement has a proof according to a system of hills. Yeah, yeah. Okay? Um, yes. The, okay. Uh, I, I didn't show the the typing rules, but uh, yeah, this this is uh, the relation that you define, okay? This the derivation trees. You do a derivation tree where now you relate, uh, instead of just a context and a formula, you relate a context, a formula, and a proof in the middle. So you construct the proof when you are uh, proving your your thing, mm -hmm. and then uh, this is the, the Kurehova isomorphism, the where, mm -hmm. sorry, this, uh, this guy, is uh, is the same as 
constructed the, 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 all the derivation tree because to, to type this guy, you have to construct the derivation tree. Mm -hmm. And uh, okay. how much this, this approach is sensitive to the system that you, that we're assuming you have? So I mean, uh, if I, you move from classical system to sorry, from intuitionistic system for a linear system or something like that. Yeah. Well, with the the curry hour, uh, it exists, of course. With uh, this, uh, the isomorphism, we didn't do anything more than simply type, and now uh, the, the uh, polymorphic, uh, which is system F, uh, which is the, the universal quantification. And that's all. Okay, so we are just working in the very beginning of this, but uh, first you will have to characterize what are the isomorphic, uh, the isomorphic uh, for, for example, for linear types, you, you have some uh, lambda calculus or linear lambda calculus that do the same, and then you uh, should uh, characterize what are the isomorphic types in the system, and then you could try to do something like that, but it's a completely new work. It's not uh, what we, do, we have done yet. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, uh, another silly question, <laughs> I think because it's, it's a very, Amazing. I try to understand the, con the context of the problem. Is this a kind of uh, um, uh, result in the direction of to solve the equality of proofs problem? Oh, to solve the what? Sorry? Those one from the problem from proof theory of the identity of proofs. Ah. Uh, it's a kind of step to solve that? I, I will say that uh, it uses this more than this go in the same direction. I mean, the, uh, we are given already the, the isomorphism. We know that these two types are the same. Okay. What we are doing is is, uh, is uh, something more, which is, okay, now since they are the same, uh, let's consider that they are the same and, and uses, use them as the same, you see? But uh -huh. uh, this work of identifying what are the, 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 the types that can be considered as the mm -hmm. same has been done by, well, the Cosmo in particular have worked a lot in the 90s on, on, on simply type lambda calculus, also with polymorphies, and also with negation, the, 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 the bottom. Mm -hmm. uh, so somebody else say, these two guys are the same. What we are saying is, OK, if they are the same, why we don't do uh, something that consider them as the same? OK, mm -hmm. so this is a step forward. OK, thank you very much again. Thank you for answering my questions. Thank you. That was why I was asking you about software plagiarism, because using Curry Howard, you could just watch for equivalence of programs. So, yeah. Mauricio? Nice. Ah, OK, uh, thank you, uh, Bruno. And thank you very much, Alexander, for, for the very nice uh, talk. I really enjoyed that. And well, I am really interested in the uh, uh, contents of this calculus from the uh, point of view of programming language. And I see there is a nice algebraic reformulation of the Cartesian product and the uh, intersection mm -hmm. uh, embedded in the uh, calculus. Uh, and also intuitively is uh, adequate for uh, non-deterministic programming. But I know you have done some uh, other work in quantum computing, and also uh, mm -hmm. you mentioned some uh, relation with uh, linear uh, lambda calculus, and <coughs> also with, I, I think, algebraic linear lambda calculus. Mm -hmm. And OK, the interesting uh, views of types used to uh, program. And how you related uh, this with that? And why uh, you uh, decide to work in this direction uh, from the point of view of programming language? That is an excellent question because, in fact, uh, we started with this uh, this line of work with uh, Shil Dweck by uh, working on lambda on quantum lambda calculus. The idea uh, at the beginning was to consider the conjunction as the superposition in in quantum computing, 
And then uh, it happened that uh, the superposition uh, is commutative. I mean, uh, if you superpose uh, two systems in one sense or the other, it's exactly the same. And then uh, we started working in the type system where we needed this, uh, these two guys to be the same. And we say, okay, but they are the same. They are a conjunction. Why they, they doesn't, it doesn't work? And then we started from there. At the end, it ended up with something, nothing to do with, the, with that. In, in fact, for in many papers, uh, instead of uh, having the, the pairs, we wrote uh, directly the, the plus because it was the, the, our, our superposition. And superposition mm -hmm. in quantum computing is the plus. Uh, later, we moved for the product because uh, having a, a plus for the consumption uh, makes a lot of consumption of, uh, of a <laughs> bizarre thing because uh, in general, the plus is the disjunction. Uh, and later, we move on and we are not uh, doing this for quantum anymore. Uh, but yeah, this uh, started because we were uh, looking for uh, quantum computing. Mm -hmm. And in, in particular with the algebraic lambda calculus. But uh, again, there is a very early version of this uh, of this paper in a, in a small workshop where we uh, speak about uh, about uh, that connection. That uh, And then at some point, we noticed mm -hmm. that uh, it doesn't make sense because it has nothing to do with quantum. <laughs> and, and then we drop that, and we continue in this line. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, if you are interested in the in more in the programming language uh, part, um, I have a work with uh, Pablo Martinez Lopez, uh, published in IFL. 2016, I, I, if I don't mm -hmm. remember bad, uh, where we, we give an implementation of this. And then the, in the implementation, we have to solve a lot of things because here we are uh -huh. saying that two programs are the same. And uh, then to say that two programs are the same is uh, really nice if you do it uh, theoretically. But when mm -hmm. you have to implement it, it uh, means a lot of work because you have to say, OK, this program are the same. And then we mm -hmm. refactor the, all the system to have only reductions and, and that is I and we also added the the the, the uh, recursion to the system so it's uh, it's quite interesting from the programming point of view. Mm -hmm. Yes, very nice. Uh, well, I think uh, this non-determinist comes only because you are dealing with the Cartesian and the uh, intersection. No, this is not alone from one of the operators. The, so both them uh, combine it. Yeah, is is uh, is what I explained in this slide. The, the problem is that uh, you mm, have yeah. normally. I, I come. I, I come late. <laughs> sorry. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. The the, the non determinism is, is because of this. It's because uh, you have commutative pairs, and then mm -hmm. if you have commutative pairs, you cannot project uh, with respect okay. to position. Right. Because it doesn't make sense because okay. it, it, there is no position. And then we have to project with respect to the type. But then you can have a pair with, uh, where there is more than one proof of some mm -hmm. type, more than one term of some type, and that gives you the non determinist. Mm -hmm. And if you consider the, if you are familiar with the algebraic lambda calculus or the, the non deterministic calculus, what uh, we are doing uh, with this is uh, kind of the pair is kind of uh, the parallel composition and the projector is a kind of the non-deterministic. So uh, the, the non-deterministic choice that you usually have in a non-deterministic calculus, here we uh, split it in two, in two things. One is the one that mm -hmm. creates a parallel, and the other is the one that, that says, OK, now uh, keep only one of the, of the, of the two paths. So this is a kind of parallel composition, but uh, uh, a mixed with a non-deterministic choice. If you are familiar with the, yes. I don't know, the DPR work, okay, in, yeah. uh, this, this kind of work, yeah. No, not at all. Uh, oh. Okay, the, the, the last question is perhaps I ask you for a confirmation about uh, how this will be useful for uh, Things related with uh, parallelism, parallel uh, programming. Um, I am not sure it will. 
Uh, what do you mean by parallel programming? Uh, you mean the, well, the... I think uh, whether a version of this calculus will be uh, adequate for uh, typing by calculus or things like that. Ah, uh, no idea in uh, something uh, again. What you have to uh, what uh, a possible path is to try to. Uh, consider in one typed by calculus, what are the isomorphic types, and then uh, try to see if you can uh, equate uh, some stuff. But this, uh, right now, this is not a, this is not mm -hmm. a method that uh, directly extends to everything. Uh, you can somehow extend it uh, quite easily with a lot of, uh, quotes mark uh, quite easily if you know exactly what are the isomorphic types if you know what are the isomorphic types then to extend this okay you have a lot of choose uh, of uh, choices to do like uh, i show here that uh, for each uh, rule you have for each uh, isomorphic you have many rules and sometimes if you add all those rules then you don't you break everything as we did here uh, but uh, what rules to add is not that hard uh, what uh, mm -hmm. may be hard is to see, okay, if you have these rules, then what, uh, uh, did, did you break everything or it works? If it, if it doesn't work, then what uh, you have to keep uh, to have something working, see? Mm -hmm. oh, so, nice. but it's interesting to, mean, to, to go for pi calculus. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much also for the precise answer. Thank you for the question. Alejandro. Okay. Thank you, Bruno. So, Danny? <coughs> Hello. Can I, you hear me? Yes, I can. Yes. Hello, Alejandro. How are Hello. you? Nice talk. So, I have just a curiosity. I missed the beginning of your talk, so I don't know if you talked about this already, but I see that you have some operators distributing over other operators. Yeah. And how do you deal with unification for type inference? Because I think unification for distributivity is undecidable. How do you that do is, that? That is exactly what I told you when I went to Brasilia. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I remember explaining you uh, in one hour this uh, this thing in the blackboard very fast. Yes, and yes. Not organized. And uh, yeah, I think uh, we have to do something. Um, in the implementation with it, we don't have type inference, oh, okay. so we don't need a uh, unification. But of course, this is something that uh, we should uh, try to discuss and see if we, we can do something to her because I really, uh, I really think there is, uh, there is some work to do. Okay, I remember you told me something about this, and that you, you did. <laughs> so I was curious to know if you had had already solved it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, uh, I didn't solve it, and I didn't have the slides to explain it, so I guess you didn't understand anything of what I said. No, no, <laughs> I just missed the beginning, so <laughs> no problem. Yes. Just, that's it. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Great. We, we should discuss this. Yes, at some point. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Thank you. So, any other question? Rafael? Well, hello, again. Uh, so, you, you mentioned that you couldn't add all the um, isomorphism uh, equivalence because you would break the system. So, how did you choose which to add and which to leave behind? And Adding uh, different rules does it does it give you something equivalent? Does it preserve the same properties? Okay, that is a great question. And uh, before I say anything else, this is one of my PhD students, but we didn't plan this question. <laughs> he is working in other in other stuff. Uh, yes. That is a really good question. How we choose from all these rules? 
because uh, we could have chosen uh, more or less uh, or one or the other. So what we did uh, with the first system, which is system I, uh, is we choose the rules that uh, will give us the closer to a progress property we could. Okay, so what we wanted is to have the progress property. At the end, we didn't manage to do it. We got uh, these uh, these cases uh, behind, but we noticed that these cases, in fact, could be solved by extensionality, which is what uh, we did uh, later. So at the end, what we choose is uh, something somehow arbitrary that gives us the 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 progress. Property. Of course, you could have progress if you choose other uh, uh, subset. What we know is that you cannot choose everything. If you choose everything, then you break uh, normalization. But uh, this is not the only subset that works. That is the, the answer. This is the subset that is one subset that we prove that works, and uh, that is enough. OK, great. I cannot uh, listen to you. Sorry, uh, I'm going mute in the meeting. I always forgot it. <laughs> so, uh, any other question or comment? No. So, thank you very much again, Alejandro. It was a really nice talk. And thank, thank you for everybody who here. And hope to see you again in the next seminar. Please stay safe. Thank you very much. <laughs>